Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing a follow-up video to a Spotlight on Petite palettes that I did four months ago, and I didn't realize it was four months ago until I went back and I rewatched my video, and I was like, whoa, that was a long time ago. <laughs> this is part two of the Spotlight on Petite palettes for the Charlotte Tilbury Quads. Now, if you missed that video, the original video, I'll throw it up in the cards, but long story short, it was a fail. <laughs> uh, for how expensive these quads were and how much work it took to make them work and everything, it was a hot mess. Now, there was one thing that I did in that video that they actually don't recommend you do for Charlotte Tilbury quads, which is prime my eyes. I have very hooded lids. So for the majority, I would say 99% of eyeshadows, I prime my lids. That's just what I need to do, and so I do it. I had my eyes primed when I worked on these palettes for the first couple of times, and they just did not work out. Now, when I bought these in Sephora, there was a Charlotte Tilbury representative there, and they did mention you're not supposed to prime your eyes because these are infused with primer, which, yeah, whatever, okay? <laughs> that being said, I went back. I went back to the drawing board. I started using these quads again without primer. They worked a lot better. They did. They're still not, you know, fantastic or worth the full price, in my humble opinion, but I did get better looks. So before I start ranting about the palette, let's go ahead and jump into two looks, one with each of these quads. Oh, 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 
So those are the two looks that I get without any eye primer with both of these quads. The green quad is called the Rebel and then the other quad is the Walk of No Shame quad. Let's talk about the Walk of No Shame first. This is the one I've used more um, in depth than the other quad and then this one is the one I like the least. I do not like this one. It The shades are dry, the look comes out kind of pretty but it, it's not fantastic. When I have a full face of makeup on and I try using this in the lower lash line, there's like nothing there. It, it, it's nothing there. It's really disappointing. The shades are actually super dry and I'm pretty sure I hit super hard pan in this shade right here. Like I try to go in with my finger or with a brush and I barely get anything off like anymore and it looks like shiny hard pan, which is super disappointing for a 50 something dollar quad. Like just, it's not there. Now the reason that this video got pushed back is I was actually ready to film this a couple of weeks ago, but then I found this in a, uh, I think it was Rite Aid. This is from Flower Beauty and this is the Petal Play Shadow Quad and it looks pretty similar. So I saw this, I saw the two like quads side by side and I was like, ooh, hold on a minute, maybe there's a dupe. Now I am sad to inform you this isn't really a direct dupe. I did swatch these side by side. The tones are different, the shades are different, and I do have to say the Flower Beauty Quad swatches better and performs better. <laughs> so it's not really fair to call this like a dupe because they're fairly different products. Um, that being said, this really impressed me and I haven't tried a whole lot of Flower Beauty products. I just have a couple here and there. So eventually I do want to pick up a few more products, probably from Ulta, and do a, a big brand review of the Flower Beauty line. But um, if you are interested in something kind of similar to these quads from Charlotte Tilbury, but you don't want to spend the money and you actually want something that'll give you a nice look and swatch nice, uh, go for the Flower Beauty one. <laughs> So overall, my thoughts on this Walk of No Shame palette, definitely not worth the money. I, I'm just really disappointed with this. And even though I found a way to make this look better without eye primer just on my lid, it doesn't look good all day. By like the four hour mark, it's creased and it looks blah. So even though it looks good, it looks better when I first apply this, uh, this and the other palette, without any primer, my hooded lids just crease everywhere. So. Meh. Speaking of the Rebel, the one that I'm wearing on my eyes today, it is a gorgeous, like it looks very pretty. Like I love the grungy tones. If there was anything from Charlotte Tilbury that I really wanted, it was this palette. This one is a little bit more worth it to me than the other one. Like if I had these two and I know their quality, I'd probably declutter the Walk of No Shame because I know I'm not really going to reach for it. Whereas this one, I really do like these tones, these shades. And even though I know it's not going to be long lasting for like filming or for a video or for just like a picture, I'd probably pull this out because I really love grungy green tones. And this has a bunch of grungy green tones. <laughs> That being said, if like Wet n Wild or some other brand came out with very similar shades in a different formula for cheaper, I would get rid of this in the heartbeat, to be honest. Yeah. So that being said, really all my experience with Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows has told me is not worth the price. Not worth the price, not worth the hassle, not really worth anything, unfortunately. <laughs> And that was me giving it a good benefit of the doubt. I did that first video. I went back to the drawing board. I tested it. I've been testing these for four months. Four months and it just, mm. it's not worth it. Save your money. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you for waiting for this video. I didn't even realize it was four months since the first video until I sat down the film. Thank you for being patient and for following up with this video. Let me know down below if you've ever tried any Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows and if you're still tempted. <laughs> and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.